Hello everyone, welcome back to P7 Online. Um, you know, I have more free time now. There's more free time for all of us since we're stuck here. So I figured that I could release more lessons. And I plan on releasing lessons every Saturday and Tuesday until we can be back together. And I might do this throughout summer too, depending on how I'm feeling. Depending on if you guys see a desire for it, which I'm sure you guys will because you know, you always hungry. You should always be hungry for the word. But this lesson, getting right into it, it's called When Jesus Gets the White Elephant. These lessons are about Christmas, and you know, I know it's not the Christmas season, but we should still focus on it because, you know, it's still important. It's important to, like, dive into it and, like, see what we really should be celebrating on Christmas and how we can get closer to God through, you know, the season. So, getting right into it. Have you ever been to a birthday party where partygoers bought gifts for everyone except the one whom the party was for? It's not, it's not common. I mean, it might have happened before, but it's definitely not common. Like, why would you go to a birthday party and give gifts to the other people but not the person the party's for? Most of the time, the only person that gets gifts is the person that it's their birthday because you know it's a celebration of them. At Christmas, that's kind of what we do. We kind of, you know, we give everyone else gifts, but we forget to praise and worship the Lord. And, you know, we just kind of push him aside so that we can get, you know, what we want to get done, we can get it done. And, you know, we're all we're all guilty of it, you know. The Christmas season's about Jesus, but who really, you know, not many people really take the time that they should. And if we could, we could do them, like, with unlimited time, but we don't have that. Take the time that they could, they should to pray and praise the Lord and read their Bible and that kind of thing. He only receives our attention after everything's already done, which is, even if it's not after, it's like, you know, let's, let's talk about, you know, the, the story of the birth of Jesus before we open our presents. Well, let's hurry it up so we can open our presents and get the goods. I'm not, I'm not saying that getting presents is bad, but we do need to focus more on Jesus and the reason for the season, which is his birth. A few gifts Jesus does love, though, are when you praise him with your mouth and worship him with your life. That's important because, you know, you can easily just praise him with your mouth but not live the way that you should through him. You know, you can you can just, you can be a show. You can go to church on Sundays. Well, we can't go to church on Sundays right now, but that's not what I'm saying. You can go to church on Sundays and put on a show and act like you're all holy. But whenever it comes to down to how you act during the week, it could be different than what you're acting like at church. And you could be living two different, you could be two-faced. You can be living two different lives. That's not what God wants. He wants you to worship him all the time. I understand. We have busy schedules, you know. Sure, we're all stuck right now, but on normal life, we have busy schedules. And it doesn't always work to where we can always give him his full, our full attention, but we should always live through what he says, and we should listen to what the Word says, the Bible. Because, you know, that's the most, that's what should guide our lives. That's what, ultimately, that's what we should follow. Offer him some praise right now. I mean, you know, you're watching this. You're hearing how we should praise him. You know, you can praise him. You can say hallelujah. You can say thank you, Jesus. You can maybe sing a song if you're bored. Just give him some praise and magnify the Lord. It's it's not that hard. We magnify other things. We, mag not, we magnify, you know, we put on pedestals these stars, you know. Let's say you like basketball, LeBron James, Stephen Curry, Giannis. All these people that, you know, yeah, they're they're good at what they do. But but Jesus deserves more praise than them because of what he's done for us. He died for all of us. That's crazy. And it's about to be Easter. And that's kind of funny that I brought that up. He's died for all of us and resurrected so that we could be saved. And yet we don't praise him as much as we praise LeBron James, Stephen Curry, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, those type of people that, you know, they would never die for us because they don't even know who we are. But Jesus did die for us. What's your, I mean, don't you think we should give him more praise? I'm not saying that I'm perfect. No one is. We need to give him more praise than we ever have. But, you know, we somehow lack doing that we don't do it as much as we should so originally white elephant gift referred to an extravagant but burdensome gift that was hard to dispose of as the story goes the king of zeum gifted rare albino elephants to personal tenants who had angered him so they would be ruined by the cost of the animal's upkeep today a white elephant gift has come to refer to a gift that is worthless something no one really wants you know that gift that like let's say your aunt gives you or your uncle on christmas and, you know, you don't really like the gift. You open it and you're, like, disappointed. But you act happy because you don't want to hurt them feelings. That's what an elephant gives. You don't want it. But you have to act act happy and not hurt their feelings. I understand that. We all do it. We've all done it at least once. So, 
as you've always got gifts that you want, you know, something that you haven't been disappointed in. Well, one have been good for you because, you know, that's very good. But then there are gifts that people get that they don't want. And, you know, it kind of disappoints them. But let's go away off and get this. Christmas is supposed to be a celebration of Jesus, but he often gets little more than the white elephant gift. A little more, you, he, we do give him some attention, don't get me wrong, but we don't give him as much as we should. Like I've mentioned multiple times, we don't give him the attention that he deserves. I don't know why we don't, but we don't. We mention, you know, we mention the Christmas story. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's read this before we open the gifts, but let's get right into the gifts. Let's read this really quickly. You know, let's not worry about what it actually says. Let's not, like, dive into it. Let's just worry about getting it over with and then getting the gifts because that's what everyone wants. They want the gratification of getting a gift. And they want to open the gifts and see what they got. Which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but we need to dive more into the word and see what this story is truly saying. Have you participated in an activity this Christmas season that was truly a celebration of Jesus? Christmas was like four months ago, three, four months ago. Um, you guys probably don't remember, so just don't even worry about that. If Christmas is about celebrating Jesus' birth, we should purpose to do that. Gift given decorations and Christmas cookies aren't wrong. They just shouldn't be the focus of Christmas. We shouldn't be looking at Christmas as oh, let's go bake some cookies. That shouldn't be what we need to do. You know, we shouldn't be looking at it as the most important thing is what gift are we getting. The most important thing is magnifying the Lord and, you know, praising that he was born so that he could one day die for us and, you know, die for our sins. Let's look at the first gift givers of Christmas, the wise men. The wise men. So it says, read Matthew 2 and 11, which I will read to you guys right now. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. So what that means is they literally, the wise men followed the North Star to find Jesus and Mary. So they could, right when they found him and they saw him, they immediately fell to their knees well, they fell down. It doesn't say they fell to their knees. They fell down and worshipped him. Immediately, right when they saw him, they gave him gifts. They gave him gifts as gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, do we give that much attention to Jesus on Christmas? I'm not saying that, you know, we should be, you know, buying gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But we could fall down and praise him. And I don't feel like we do that enough. So, you know, when, whenever Christmas comes around here in about a little less than nine months, I think, just remember that we can, we can praise him more than we do. Wise men came from the east to worship Jesus, and they brought the free gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, as I just said. Gold has always been valued as a precious metal. Therefore, gold sim symbolically represents purity and worth. It represents gold is what you want to get. It's a high gift. It's expensive. It's a nice gift. You want gold. The wise men's gift of gold was helpful in preserving young Jesus' life. Joseph was warned twice in dreams to flee with Mary and Jesus to protect them from those trying to harm them. Because people were trying to harm them. These trips would have been costly. The wise men's gold offered provision for these journeys. Gold symbolized that Christ was kin and also may have foreshadowed that just as gold is purified in the fire, fire Jesus would be tested because he was tested and trips are costly and the gold was able to help pay for that cost. That's pretty much what I just said. Frankincense is an aromatic type of reason, a secretion from plants and trees. It was an important luxury trade good of the ancient Medit Mediterranean world. Frankincense was used in perfumes and noin ores embalming fluid and an incense and religious ceremonies so frankincense was used in kind of like a lot of things it was pretty important in the trade world it was expensive it was time consuming to produce it was costly frankincense was probably a practical gift for the family of a newborn baby as it was an ingredient used in some medications because old testament high priests used frankincense in their sacrifices to god this gift symbolized jesus's future status as a high priest Frankincense cost money, and it was good for them because, you know, some medication that they could use for the baby, you know, they got with that frankincense, as that was just said. Myrrh is the dried sap of certain trees. During some periods of ancient times, it said myrrh was equal and worth to gold. Myrrh was often used in perfumes and usually saved for special occasions. It was valued for its antiseptic and anti-inflammatory qualities. Even today, it is found in salve, mouthwash, and toothpaste. 
Myrrh was most often used for burials to mask the odor of decay, as such it symbolized bitterness, suffering, and affliction. The sacrifices Jesus would one day make, suffering, oh, he suffered on the cross, bitterness, people were bitter, and they said, the same people, I got into this yesterday when, when me and my family were studying, the same people that a week before Jesus was crucified were chanting, Savior, come save us, when he was riding to Jerusalem on the donkey. We're chanting, we want Barabbas when offered Jesus or Barabbas to which one that Pilate would free. And they were chanting, we want Barabbas. The same people, his own people, denied him. And they put, they were bitter. They wanted Jesus to die. They wanted Jesus to be the one that get crucified. And that's what happened. That's what happened. The sacrifice Jesus must make, must have made. He died for everyone, and if he didn't do it, there's no hope for any of us. So, he's our savior, and we should praise him. But we we do praise him. I'm not saying we don't praise him. Don't think that I'm saying that. But do we do as much as we should? Does any of us do as much as we should? That's what I'm trying to get to you guys, because we praise so much of the broad veins, especially us in high school and us that are younger. You know, we praise these people we look up to them and sure some of them are good role models and i'm not tearing them down but we don't look to the one true savior of the world that we can look to to get advice to this know that he can save us and i just don't think that's how i think that we need to work out better on that and you know just hope that you know we can grow a deeper connection with God through praying and through the word reading the world word and what else, what better time than now whenever we have nothing to do whenever we have hours of just free time to, to read your bible to pray and to build a relationship with God and, and the, to get through this tough time what better time than now there is not one there isn't but that's really all that there is if you just did get the white elephant we don't he still does, and you know it's tough, but we we can work if we, as a society and as people, look to praise God more. He will be happier, cause he likes the praises of his people. Thank you for listening. This has been this has been a good lesson. Um, so I'm just I'm asking you guys to, you know, as you have this free time when we're stuck at home, to please pray, and please read your Bibles. Get a better understanding of this than I can explain because if you're reading for yourself and you're studying you will understand it better than I could tell you because you'll be connecting with God thank you for listening I hope that you guys are staying safe I hope that you guys are having a good week thank you I will I will release one of these again on Saturday I will see you guys then have a nice day